Hi, this is Rachel from In the Library of Lady Viele, and I'm doing a sort of movie review, I think. Um, I'm, I saw the Chronicles of Narnia Voyage of the Dawn Treader last night, and I kind of wanted to talk about my feelings about the film. So this is going to be kind of heavily spoilery, I think, for for the film and for the if you like not actually read the book, because although. As you'll find out in, if you watch, carry on watching this, they're two completely different things. So, yeah, if you don't want to have me ranting about very, various major plot things about the film, stop watching now. People gone? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I went to see Dawn Turner last night. It's out of the books and stuff. Um, it's my favourite one. But this film, there were things I liked, things I loved, things I disliked, and things I probably really hated. I think what I what really, first I'll start with the good stuff, what I really loved was Eustace. The kid who played, um, Will Poulter who plays Eustace, I loved that kid, he is so perfect. His voice is that kind of snotty, brattish kind of um, quality to it and it's just how he just how he was at his acting and just his character was just so amazing I really loved him he was so good was so good and what I liked although it's sad that the um, Eddie Izzard didn't redo the voice for Reaper Cheap but having Simon Pegg doing it he was just as awesome I actually really like that. I, I do really like Simon Pegg, and I thought thought he was really good, really cheap. I think out of a choice of Eddie Izzard and Simon Pegg, I think there's no bad to those. I think it's both pretty good options. Um, I'm trying to think what other good things I like. Overall, kind of visually, everything looked really quite uh, good. Eustace the dragon. At some points, it looked a bit kind of yeah, with the visual, but I think when it was closer up, close up, it looked better. And it sort of and like looked a bit dodgy at some bits, but overall I think that looked alright. I'm trying to think, remember, like general kind of visuals and stuff was re I actually really quite like that. Uh, things I disliked, um, some bum lines from Edmund and and Lucy. Some some of the dialogue was a bit eesh, and especially at the end with the whole kind of. But I have another name in your world. You must l learn to know me by that. In, in like Aslan from the end, which is basically the whole really blatant sort of Jesus kind of no offense to sort of any sort of Christian or anything, but the kind of whole one thing about gets me about this book is the more lots of kind of yes, I am your representation of God and Jesus in this world and kind of thing, it gets really kind of overt and slapping you around the face with it kind of at the end. But that was a bit mm, and some of the some of the dialogue was a bit kind of wooden. I kind of it got a bit cringy watching Edmund sort of just deliver a line going, Wow, there was no inflection on that at all. Um oh, so now I'm trying to remember these things. Even after last night, I don't know how much I complained about it. It's just, stuff has just gone out of my head completely. Uh, other things I dislike. I'm trying to think, dislike. Sort of some of the dislike about mashing of islands together. Kind of how different events of what happened on certain islands. Because as the journey goes from like when they get when Edmund, Lucy, and Eustace get there to when they get to the eastern end of the Narnian world is sort of there's, a, there's supposed to be several more islands than there are but that is not a major thing the major thing which I kind of hated is how badly they mashed around the plot I can understand sort of why they did kind of what they did but basically creating a whole kind of overarching bad guy must defeat creepy mist invading everything and sacrificing people and it's just I understand the kind of seven swords bollocks that was yeah 
I can understand why they, they did it, just to have something kind of, instead of it just being a, basically, in the book, it's just pretty much a road trip on a boat. Kind of, ooh, let's just carry on across the sea and see what we find. Nothing, and sort of deal with little things on the islands. There's no major kind of threat at all going on, apart from finding the Seven Lords. It's kind of, I think that's kind of their, their sort of whimsical, yeah, I kind of fancy, you know, going after those Seven Lords that left ages ago and tell them, yeah, you can come back now, because it's all safe, you're not going to be sort of executed as traitors or whatever for for being against Caspian's uncle, whatever the hell his name is, I've totally forgotten. But kind of the whole Seven Swords led Aslan's table to defeat the evil mist of Dark Island is like, eh? That was a bit pull that out of your, your back pocket with that one. That was a bit, definitely a bit of strain. Didn't, I understand why they did it, but I just don't like that they did it. And I also didn't really like how they put the islands out of order. Kind of, in the book it sort of, I think it goes, Dragon Island where Eustace gets turned into dragon, obviously, and as far as I'm aware, he gets turned back into dragon before they leave. Um, then there's... I think there's a, an island that's got nothing on which you know, the sea serpent attack happens somewhere I think af after Eustace has been turned into a dragon and then there's the Goldwater Island where they find the guy and the, I think there is some kind of kind of conflag but but we could be rich but it's also really really dangerous to be having this gold water thing because it just turns people's heads and whatever and I think then comes the Koryakin and the Duffel Puds. Although I quite like those, although you didn't see them enough. I, I really like the Duffel, the Duffel Puds. You just don't see them enough in the film. They're literally there for about five seconds before they bugger off. And it's just, uh, I could have done with more of those. The whole house, and, whole house scene and with all the spells and stuff, I really like that. Although they didn't have everything quite the same because they just book to film differences, which is fair enough. But I could do, could have done with more of the duffel puds. Duffel puds would have been better. More duffel puds. Duffel puds. Oh, they can't say their name and I can't say their name. Uh, and then it's, I think it's supposed to be then when you get to the Dark Island and then getting found to the Ramandus thing. Yeah, I kind of, because it would be my sort of, plus I read the book really recently as well, so I, everything's kind of fa fairly fresh in my mind. So it kind of really stuck out that they sort of just completely rearranged everything in the sort of plot wise, which was it kind of kept st stuff the same but in a completely different order, which was yeah, it grated on my kind of bookish. I need to have everything the same or else because it's just not the same. It's basically not nothing kind of apart from the characters and some of the main lines, it's sort of nothing the same. Well. Ha hardly anything the same because it's just the plot thing is just where have they pulled that from? It's ah, mm. kind of. I think if you hadn't read the books and you didn't mind, if you just watched the films, you'd probably be fine with it. It's kind of an alright film apart from the kind of whole slightly wooden acting in places and the slightly. Inc sort of cred incredulous plot thing with the seven magical swords and whatever, but for me, I don't. I'm not a massive fan of the Narnia films anyway, because just I've, especially with Prince Catherine, they've inserted a whole crazy battle scene in there as well. I don't just like what they. I know the books are really short though, and they do have to kind of pad things out, but it's just. I I just don't like it. <laughs> it's really it's a strange thing I have with it, but kind of visually it was pretty epic and it's got that kind of it's that whole kind of adventure f adventuresome kind of feeling and but for me it wasn't my favorite Narnia film. I can't think I think Lion Witch of Wardrobe was probably out of the three so far has been my favorite because yeah they just take quite a few liberties with it. And, well, I'd be interested to see um, the silver chair because it's going to have none of the original four patterns in it now. It'll just be Eustace and 
Jill Pearl, which should be interesting because Silver Chair is my least favorite book, so I wonder if I like the film because it's got Eustace in, and see how he does when he's just sort of carrying half it, him, carrying half the film himself. But yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna give it a rating because I'm not really long for rating movies and whatever. But if you if you do really like the books and kind of are loyal to wanting them to be the same, then just grit your teeth for the film, because if you want to see certain certain bits of it, it's good for sort of the little chunks and stuff, and the crack and C7 thing was pretty weird looking and pretty awesome looking, but it's just the whole order rearranging thing just, bah, can't deal with it. But if you haven't read the books and you just like the films, then it's, it's fine. But for me, I just wouldn't get it off my chest that I was just really ranting, kind of, all these things just irritated me. I'm doing my kind of angry claw, my, my bad romance claws. Yeah. It is snowing outside, it is snowing, and it's awesome, but it's not sticking because it kind of rained earlier. But yeah, snow. I'm not going to turn the show but ah, this video is getting really long. I'm so sorry. But yeah, any if you've seen it or if you have read the books and are thinking about seeing it and you've carried on watching this far, well done by the way. And then leave me a comment, whatever, about what you think about the film, if you've seen it or not, or if you want to see it, and what what are your sort of thoughts of maybe the like, early films, or what you think you might, might do with the last two, and if they should go back and do Magician's Nephew and Horse and Niz Boy and whatever. Because that would be interesting to see, maybe. Okay, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!